Beat School on RealAirCulture.com is brought to you by Syngenta Canada, Alberta Wheat Commission, and CNM Seeds. And we're out here on November the 9th. What an incredibly glorious November we've had. October was just sort of average, September incredible, but it's been a great fall. And look at the wheat field we're standing in. There is an unbelievable amount of incredible wheat in this province. We don't know how many acres. It's November the 9th. It's the last day to report your acres to AgriCorps. We will find out how many acres we have here in the province of Ontario, and Bernard's gonna put that in the write-up. I'm, I'm really keen to know. I think it's close to a record. Not sure if we're quite there. What's really interesting is it's been such a great fall and everybody on the 7th of September said, Peter, can I plant wheat? And my answer, the risk of low yield to early planted wheat is less than the risk of low yield to late planted wheat. So I have guys that went out on the 7th of September in the London area and planted wheat. No problem except some of those people still planted heavy, 1.5, 1.6 million. Let's think about that. So now everybody's asking me, how do I manage that? And where are we at in terms of all these different planting dates? And by the way, Johnson, who was the cereal specialist for 30 years, has done a crappy job of helping you to understand how critical that planting date really is. So I talked with a grower out at Napanee and he planted wheat on September the 18th. He also planted wheat on October the 3rd. He did the calculation. September 18th, 400 growing degree days. This was two weeks ago. He'll be at 450 now. That is perfect. That's what we want, 450. On the 3rd of October, that's two weeks difference, he had 175 growing degree days. The wheat was barely emerged. And so when you think about that, it's a two week difference, but gosh, I have wheat that got up and it has two tillers. And so that's three potential heads, the main stem, two tillers, three potential heads for every plant. Meanwhile, just two weeks later, I have wheat that's barely emerged. It so far has only one head per plant. And then we wonder why planting date and seeding rate make such a big difference. It really drives it home. So let's have a look at what we're seeing this year. So here, we're looking now at my own wheat. I dug this out of my own field Thanksgiving Monday. For those of you watching in the US, that's Canadian Thanksgiving. That's about October the 11th. It's not your end of November. So this wheat is up and I know how to manage this wheat. This wheat is late planted wheat. It's acting like late planted wheat. And unfortunately, that's just the way it is. It has about two leaves. I can live with that, but I know how to manage this wheat because this wheat needs early nitrogen next spring. I have to try and make it tiller next spring. It's just the way that it works. The other thing I want you to do while you're out counting tillers, take your shovel and make sure you dig up some plants and say, okay, how good was my drill actually working? Because I was trying to target about an inch to an inch and a quarter planting depth, and I'm barely an inch here. Now it was on the hard knoll, and I know it was better in some of the other parts of the field, but by golly, there's no mesocotyl. You can see that the seed, there's no mesocotyl. The plant doesn't lie. About three quarters of an inch, then you get the crown, then the mesocotyl, and find the seed. It will tell you how deep you planted. It really is a great thing to have a look at. So we know how to deal with this. Then we look at the wheat that is planted in this field. So this is pretty interesting stuff. Planted September 21st at Woodstock, and we're up to about 550 growing degree days. So we look at this wheat, and what do we have with this wheat? Well, we have one, two, three, four tillers and the main stem. So four tillers and the main stem, September 21st, I really don't want more than that. Gosh, perfect is two tillers. This is getting to be almost like too early planted. Notice though, no leaf disease. So I can still manage this wheat. I know how to manage this wheat because there's no leaf disease, no early nitrogen. 
but I don't want to starve it for nitrogen. So the day before I plant corn, I come in, I put my first nitrogen shot on. If I'm going to split my nitrogen, I come back in mid-May, something like that, or I can put it all on in one shot. This wheat has unbelievable yield potential, but think about it. So now I have five heads per plant. If I'm at 1 million seeds per acre, gosh, all of a sudden I'm at about 1,200 heads per square meter or 120 heads per square feet. I really only need 70 to 80 at the very most. So this is starting to make sense of where we're at. Uh, we can look at some other wheat. So here's some wheat that was planted about the 25th of September. And this wheat is just about ideal. Again, whoops, again, as you go through this, I want you to dig down and try to find the seed. In this situation, you can see where the crown has set. And actually I pulled the seed off, but this was planted about an inch and a half. And there's a beautiful plant because we have the main stem, a, a tiller here, another tiller that's here, and a third tiller just starting. So that's just about ideal. Now we get into the really interesting stuff. So here is some ultra early planted wheat. This is probably planted somewhere around the 10th of September, again here at Woodstock. And when I start looking at this week, I mean, look at the mat we have and the amount of disease that's showing up on the wheat leaves. So now all of a sudden I'm getting tweets from these people that planted ultra early saying, what do I do? I've got disease, my wheat's going yellow, it's all matted down. And my first question is, what was the seeding rate? And of course, they never come back and say a million seeds per acre like somebody might have mentioned. They always say, well, I cut it back to 1.4 or 1.5. Good grief, think about how many heads you have. It's quite interesting. I talked to one of my German buddies and he said, don't give me this wheat. I have no idea. It's got five, six, seven, eight tillers. I don't know how to manage this wheat. So what I can tell you, no, fungicide this fall. It doesn't help. We've done that research. It doesn't help. Another question I get, what about nitrogen? It's going yellow. It needs more nitrogen. Doesn't help. We've tried that as well. The answer is that we're not sure how to manage it, but we know that this wheat, it's going to be lodging prone. So you don't want to starve it for nitrogen, but no early nitrogen. So you really want to wait as long as you can before you put that first nitrogen on this wheat to let a few tillers maybe fall away. We don't want it that thick. And the other thing you're going to have to look at is what's the variety. If you have a, an R46 or a Branson, standability is so good, maybe you're okay. But if you're dealing with a R34 or a CM249 where the standability is okay but not great, man, we have to start looking at growth regulators to keep this stuff standing because it is incredibly lodging prone. Nonetheless, big acreage of wheat, great yield potential. How could wheat peat be any happier? We'll figure it out. Just keep out there digging, scouting, know where you're at so you know what management you need.